create a clean heart in me, O oh God. Create a clean heart in me, O oh God. Mary said yes to the Holy Spirit, and we should too. Today, the gospel passage that I proclaimed is given to us for the solemnity that is this very day, March 25th, which is the solemnity of the Annunciation. And so this is that dramatic encounter between the angel Gabriel and the Blessed Mother. The Blessed Mother becomes for us the icon of receptivity to the Holy Spirit. She said yes to Jesus, and the Holy Spirit came upon her, came into her, in such an extraordinary and powerful way. Over the course of these weeks of retreat, we have in the presence of our Lord Jesus, built upon the themes of encountering Jesus. We do so in a privileged way here in the Blessed Sacrament. But really, it's about opening our hearts to him, abandoning ourselves to Jesus. And as we grow closer to him, as we grow more into the men and women that he's called us to be, we're then called to give witness, to share the beautiful gift of faith, the beautiful gift of Jesus with our brothers and sisters. And so we encounter Jesus anew, we grow as his disciples, and we give witness to the power of his mercy. Along the way, we are, of course, in need of healing. And so last week, for those who participated, we focused on that healing message and also offered the Sacrament of Reconciliation, a pathway to healing. And so today, it's appropriate that we can summarize really all these five weeks with those elements of abandonment to God's will, growing as his disciples and sharing that with others in a particular way as we see the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives and that the Holy Spirit sends us on a mission. The Holy Spirit empowers us to share that good news of Jesus with others. Mary in Pope Francis's apostolic letter, it's entitled, Evangelii Gaudium, the joy of the gospel, points to Mary as the mother of evangelization. Listen to these words. With the Holy Spirit, notice that first clause, with the Holy Spirit. Mary is always present in the midst of the people. She joined the disciples in praying for the coming of the Holy Spirit, and thus made possible the missionary outburst, which took place at Pentecost. She is the mother of the church which evangelizes, and without her, we could never truly understand the spirit of the new evangelization. So Pope Francis points us to Mary as this mother of evangelization, who does this with the Holy Spirit. Now today, to reflect on the Holy Spirit, sometimes the Holy Spirit can be almost the like the forgotten person of the Trinity. You know, we have an image of God as Father, because you know, we have a sense of who fathers are. Uh, Jesus, we have lots of images of him in different cultures and different times. Jesus can be our brother, our savior. And so we can, you know, kind of get our head around Jesus, though, of course, he's beyond all of our comprehension at some level. But the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, Think about it. What are some of the images that we have? Uh, tongues of fire. You know, so we oftentimes wear red to symbolize the Holy Spirit because of the fire of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. You think about fire, you can't really, uh, you can't hold it in your hands. I mean, it's powerful, but it has its own uh, capacity to give heat and to give light. We also have the dove. You know, the dove which appeared at the baptism of Jesus and is referenced as an image of the Holy Spirit. And again, a dove goes where it wills, you know, it, it will fly. And we look to the dove as an image of the Holy Spirit. We also have another image, breath. 
the breath of the Holy Spirit. We're told that Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And we also know that the breath of God in the book of Genesis, which was breathed into the inanimate objects to the clay, brought forth with it his spirit, infusing humanity with his very breath. And then the wind. We're told that there's a rushing wind that came in in the Acts of the Apostles, where we're told in the second chapter, and suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, as we reflect on the identity of the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit can affect our lives. You know, if we were to kind of do, you know, Catechism 101 or reflect on it, we talk about the love of the Father and the Son being so strong that the word, as we look at Thomas Aquinas and, and Augustine, St. Augustine, they look at it and they talk about that that love between the Father and the Son is so strong that it spirates, it, it, it generates, as it were, the Holy Spirit. So have we received the Holy Spirit? Of course. We've received the Holy Spirit at baptism, received the Holy Spirit at confirmation. But for many of us, this um, understanding of the Holy Spirit can be a little bit remote unless we call the Holy Spirit to move in abundance in our lives. St. Paul's letter to the Romans says, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. So it's, it's, it's God's love poured into our hearts. In John's gospel, we read, the spirit of truth will guide you to all truth. So what preceded the outpouring of the Holy Spirit which as we look in the second chapter of Acts became such a dynamic force for evangelization, for confidently sharing the good news of Jesus. What preceded the outpouring of the Holy Spirit was a period of prayer, a period of asking for the Spirit that had been promised, and then that prayer was answered in abundance. And so what role does the Holy Spirit have in our lives? So this is kind of a, like, a, like a theological understanding of the Holy Spirit. What role does the Holy Spirit have in our prayer and evangelization? We pray to the Holy Spirit and we ask the Holy Spirit to help us pray. And the Holy Spirit himself, listen to this title, is also called the Advocate. Like the Holy Spirit is praying for us and praying in ways that we may not entirely understand. Listen to St. Paul's letter to the Romans. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with sighs too deep for words. The Catechism tells us the Holy Spirit, the artisan of God's works, is the master of prayer. And so the Holy Spirit were, teaches the children of God how to pray. And so when we find ourselves needing a boost in our prayer life, we can pray to the Holy Spirit and say, come Holy Spirit, infuse my prayers. Take what I'm maybe uncertain and confused about, I, I present it to you, Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God himself receives that prayer. Now, when we look at how we can tap into the Holy Spirit, receiving the gifts of the Holy Spirit, we think about it. So we know we've received the Holy Spirit at baptism and confirmation. But for many of us, that can sometimes go a little bit dormant unless you open your hearts more fully and ask for the Holy Spirit to be utilized even more deeply in your life. My father uh, had a prayer card. I, to be honest, I wish I held on to it. I don't know what happened to it. Um, 
But it was a beautiful prayer to the Holy Spirit that he prayed every day. Prayed every day. And it helped me to kind of understand even more fully what a, a, you know, what a beautiful man that he was and faithful man because he just would pray that the Holy Spirit would guide him and he would always do what the Holy Spirit wanted him to do. And so when we tap into that, then the Holy Spirit can become more alive in our hearts. As with all the sacraments, we know as a matter of faith, of course, that you know, God is imparted in them. But we also know that the more that we open our hearts to the truth of what's been given to us, the more that we can appreciate that and utilize that and call upon that, then the graces that we'll receive will expand even more. You know, one way to maybe uh, think about it, no analogy can be particularly sufficient, but I'll, I'll give one for you. Um, you know, if you want to make some chocolate milk, you can buy chocolate milk if you want, but you, know, you take some milk, and you usually have either a powder or a syrup. You know, you pour it in or you put it in. And what can happen is, so you, all right, so you've got milk and you've, you know, you've got this chocolate mix that's put in there. But it can just kind of go straight to the bottom. Just kind of sit there. But if you take a spoon and you stir it up, suddenly that begins to permeate the whole drink. And suddenly like, yeah, you know, okay, that, that chocolate was in there, but it, it had kind of settled, you know? And so we stir that up. And sometimes you talk about stirring up the gifts of the Holy Spirit, fanning into flame the embers of the Holy Spirit. You know, if the Holy Spirit is fire, sometimes it can feel like, you know, we've just got these teeny little embers. I mean, as a family, we always went camping on vacations. I will tell you, I'm a mediocre fire starter. <laughs> I am not the best fire starter. I'm good at like adding more logs to the fire, but I'm not the guy you want to start the thing, you know. <laughs> but if it's already going and it's kind of, you know, the embers are, are starting to go down a little bit, but, you know, it's got that heat in there. You know, you add the other log and you, you know, you, you blow into it and you say, okay, you know, that this flame will be more alive. And so to live a life in the Holy Spirit is to tap into that strength that has already been given to us. And to do it throughout our daily lives. Now, uh, one of the ways to, to pray always, you know, it's one of these mysterious lines in, in the New Testament, you know, to pray always, well, how do we do that? Is to just routinely invite the Holy Spirit to be with you throughout the course of the day. So I might get a phone call um, or somebody after an event or other things might say, you know, can I just talk to you, Bishop? Okay, but I don't know what's going to come next. You know, I don't know what will be spoken. And so suddenly I'll try to begin. I'm not always perfect at this, but to quietly, you know, mentally pray to the Holy Spirit and say, Holy Spirit, be with me. Give me the words to speak. Tell me to be quiet if I'm not supposed to say anything. Whatever is supposed to happen at this moment, use me. Just in that millisecond between you know, a kind of introduction and what's going to happen next. To just invite the Holy Spirit in and say, Holy Spirit, use me. Now, Pope Francis in his letter, Evangelii Gaudium, as I mentioned before, talks about the role of the Holy Spirit. And he refers to this at the service of, of a communion which evangelizes. What does this mean? It's that we tap into the Holy Spirit when we have those encounters with other people so that the Lord can utilize us according to his purposes. And the charisms that, you know, we, we pray for and that we know are given, he reminds us, as the Second Vatican Council taught, that these charisms continue to this day. These gifts are meant to renew and build up the church. And so the Holy Spirit who inspires the word, we're told today, just as at the beginning of the church, acts in every evangelizer who allows himself or herself to be possessed and led by him. Now listen to this. The Holy Spirit places on his lips the words which he could not find by himself. 
This is Pope Francis actually quoting St. Paul VI. The Holy Spirit places on his lips the words which he could not find by himself. There's this way that we say, I don't have the perfect words, but Lord, use me. I think at different times, you know, we have these encounters, or we might be open to them. Or, we, you know, the promptings of the Holy Spirit can work in many different ways. I'm amazed. I have a few people uh, who I know who are just very, very prayerful. And it just seems like somehow they know the exact moment to give someone a phone call to say they're praying for them without knowing the person needs prayer. And you do that, and suddenly you find out, oh my goodness, you know, did you know I'm going in for the test today? No. Yeah, they're going to take the biopsy, so thank you for your prayers. You know, so when I encounter some of these folks, I think it's, 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 and it's, you know, this isn't all kind of like, you know, magical stuff I'm talking about here, but it's, it is tuning into the Holy Spirit and saying, Holy Spirit, use me. And when we do that, we open our eyes, we open our hearts to the Holy Spirit using us, he'll use us. In a particular way, Pope Francis points out the role of the Holy Spirit and what, you know, he talks about the art of accompaniment and person-to-person -person evangelization. Now, evangelization can sound like kind of a scary term, and it seems like, you know, you got to have a theology book to be able to do it. But to kind of bring together some of the themes here today and to highlight the role of the Holy Spirit, this is the way that Pope Francis references this person-to-person -person encounter in which you invite the Holy Spirit in. He talks about, you know, you meet somebody. And the first step is personal dialogue. The other person speaks and shares his or her joys, hopes, concerns for loved ones, so many other heartfelt needs. So you listen in this person-to-person -person engagement when we want to give witness to the gospel. After we hear their needs, their hopes, joys, concerns, only afterwards is it possible to bring up God's word, perhaps by reading a gospel verse or relating a story, but always keeping in mind the fundamental message, the personal love of God who became man, who gave himself up for us, who is living and who offers us his salvation and his friendship. So it's, you know, to, to take and in this authentic way, respond with something that roots the conversation in this love that Christ has for all of us. This message has to be shared humbly as a testimony on the part of the one who is always willing to learn. So listen, he says, at times the message can be presented directly. So sometimes, you know, you just, in a conversation, you have that holy boldness and you say, you know, I'm going to talk to this person about the Lord. I'm going to talk to this person about something that's happened in my life. I'm going to tell them how I got through this situation. I'm going to let them know that I experienced the pain and somehow the Lord was able to work with me and take it through. And so I'm going to share from my own story directly this good news of the gospel. It says, or by a gesture. And then he says, or in a way in which the Holy Spirit may suggest in that particular situation. You know, there used to be this expression, give room for the Holy Spirit. You know, give a little room for the Holy Spirit. And so what Pope Francis says is when you have these encounters, you know, we can have a certain approach that we might want to take, but it's that openness to the Holy Spirit in a conversation with another that can open up the pathway. He really lays it out. He says, if it seems prudent, if the circumstances are right, this fraternal and listen to this word, missionary encounter, it's just a conversation, could end with a brief prayer related to the concern which the person may have expressed. In this way, they will have an experience of being listened to and understood. They will know that their particular situation has been placed before God and that God's word really speaks in their lives. It's very simple, but it's a way to call upon the Holy Spirit to infuse our relationships, to give us that wisdom, that discernment, so that we can share and give witness to the love of God. In 1 Corinthians, we hear that to each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. So the Holy Spirit is not just like kind of a, a personal possession by any means. 
but it's a benefit that then permeates the entire community. And so we say, Lord, use my gifts in a particular way to help reach out to those who may be in need, who may be suffering physically and materially, who may be suffering spiritually or emotionally, who may be destitute, depressed, concerned. To be someone who can share your gifts to those who are in need. Spirit-filled evangelizers is a whole chapter that the Holy Father gives us in his letter. And he tells us that he himself, the Pope, is longing to find the right words to stir up enthusiasm for a new chapter of evangelization full of fervor, joy, generosity, courage, boundless love and attraction. So he's pouring his heart out there saying, you know, look, I'm, I'm trying to find how I would long to have the right words to stimulate this missionary impulse, to stimulate this new evangelization. So that's really what these weeks have been, have been leading to, not just kind of a deeper enrichment of our own faith life, though that's certainly a part of it, but to be able to take that and share that good news with others and to do so. And so he says, I long to find the right words to stir this up. But then he concludes, yet I realize that no words of encouragement will be enough unless the fire of the Holy Spirit burns in our hearts. A spirit-filled evangelization is one guided by the Holy Spirit, for he is the soul of the church called to proclaim the gospel. So if the Holy Spirit is the one who animates our evangelization, we go back to that yes of Mary. We go back to her fiat. Let it be done. Her yes to God's plan. She abandoned herself into the will of God. And the Holy Spirit came upon her. She who received the Holy Spirit in such great abundance in the upper room was one of those who prayed for even more of the Holy Spirit to come upon all the brothers and sisters who were gathered in the upper room at Pentecost. She was there when the fire of the Holy Spirit came down in dynamism at Pentecost. And that same upper room of prayer, that same calling down upon the Holy Spirit, if Mary was gathered with the others to pray for a greater outpouring of the Holy Spirit, so are we. And if we avail ourselves and we say, Holy Spirit, use me, the Holy Spirit will. That's a prayer that will be honored. So that we can take that love and indeed transform to renew the face of the earth with the love of the Holy Spirit. Right here, we're in the presence of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. We may not often think of this, but St. Ephraim drew particular attention to it. You know, in the Blessed Sacrament, body and blood, soul and divinity of our Lord, so we receive himself, Jesus, the very Son of God, who is inseparable from, from the Father and the Holy Spirit. So St. Ephraim says, he called the bread his living body, filled it, with himself and his spirit. He who eats it with faith eats fire and spirit. So when we come to receive our Lord in the Holy Eucharist, we're also receiving the Holy Spirit. And so we ask Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to move in our hearts to use us to fill us. My confirmation, uh, and I was would have been confirmed at age 13. Uh, for me, uh, it, was, it was about 14 years later that my confirmation somehow just seemed to make more sense or have more of an impact on me. It's like I received it when I received the Holy Spirit, of course, at baptism. And then when I was uh, confirmed, But it was about at age 27 when I first began to have the glimmering of, you know, really seriously thinking more intensively about the priesthood, that somehow a few things that happened at that confirmation that I had disregarded at the time 
suddenly took on new meaning and impetus. And suddenly it was as if I appreciated it in a way that I didn't at the time. Not that I, like, I mean, I was glad I was confirmed. Don't get me wrong. It was great. It was, it was nice. All that. But we need to call upon that power of our confirmation, the power of our baptism, and say, Holy Spirit, use me. Because when we don't have the words to say, and when we feel tired, and when we're not sure what to do, and when we don't know what the next step is going to be, and when we're not sure how to pray, we don't know what to say, and we're confused, and all we need is more of the Lord, we say, come Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. That same Holy Spirit that was given to you at baptism, that same Holy Spirit that was given to you at confirmation, to call upon the Holy Spirit and say, use me, is to activate that Holy Spirit. To say, I want to live in the power of that Holy Spirit. When we do that, you know, we, we continue the great adventure that is the Christian life, which is a life of depth and meaning and fullness and beauty. It's being able to see the world in all its splendor because we have the eyes of Jesus that we seek to look out upon the world. As St. Teresa of Avila says, you know, yours are the feet which are to walk around the world to do good, the eyes through which Christ looks out with compassion. And so we say, come, Holy Spirit. We ask the Lord to fan into flame that great gift that he has given us. Jesus loved us and came to fulfill every prophecy that was given about him to make straight the path to God the Father, to give our lives hope and meaning and purpose. Encountering him is the best thing that can happen in our lives. Growing as his disciples will transform us and sharing his love with others is a joy. Is a joy. And I can only make such a statement not of my own strength, but because of the Holy Spirit. You know, there are some simple prayers that uh, I've been trying to utilize over the course of these weeks. Something as simple as, Jesus, I trust in you, which is a very short form of a prayer of abandonment. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord, have mercy. A classic prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. In the Great Commission, Jesus told us to go make disciples. This mission, this purpose, is one that we should all aspire to fulfill. A simple way is just to say, Holy Spirit, I'm open, come and use me. And so I'm going to slightly modify this prayer to the Holy Spirit. And instead of making it like in the second or third person, I'm going to make it in the first person. So this prayer that we pray for all is one that we can internalize to us. Let me read it first and invite you to recite after me. Come, Holy Spirit, fill my heart and enkindle in me the fire of your love. And I invite you to repeat after me. Come, Holy Spirit, fill my heart and enkindle in me the fire of your love. Come, Holy Spirit, fill my heart and enkindle in me the fire of your love. Come, Holy Spirit, fill my heart and enkindle in me the fire of your love. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Create a clean heart in me, O 